Tony Khan teases most important announcements in AEW history. So just like clockwork, they're in the, the ratings are down. There's zero interest. And he goes, some of the biggest announcements ever are coming. Oh, the biggest announcements of all time. Now, I thought because he's been doing it to promote Collision and Rampage and Dynamite, it was going to happen. One of them was going to happen on Dynamite. It still could. Tony could just be like, oh, I'm going out there. But no, it seems as though like we're not going to get these announcements till when? After Wembley or what? I don't know. But what I think it's going to be is he's just going to announce like, Ring of Honor is now AEW Ring of Honor. Collision and Rampage are now a two-hour super show on Saturdays. The first hour is Rampage, and then the second hour is Collision. And everyone will be like, well, why don't you just call it Collision? Um, or else he'll be like, Rampage and Collision are done, but Dynamite's moving to three hours. I could see that. Um, or like, Or him being like, the third hour of rampage airs live, but it's rampage live, you know, like I could like on Wednesdays, I could see him doing that. Uh, just something like that. Oh, we're launching the AEW plus app. Like it'll just be something like that. Or like we got to deal with WBD or we have to change the name of the T and T and TBS titles or something. It'll be some kooky sh that is like very underwhelming and the most important announcements like you can't there's no announcements you can make we signed john cena people are like it's shane mcmahon coming in no to do what oh yeah i brought harvey weinstein's kid in to run my company for me but really he's just on a talent deal and i have full creative control still that's all it'll be so if it's that, you know, and it's not going to be that. Uh, Jess for two ninety nine says, "Who's getting left at the airport this year?" Yeah, <laughs> dude, for real. Wait till the boys come on and tell you some. So Tony Khan is in an interview, and he's talking about we're on the verge of the most important announcements in the history of AEW. There are multiple aspects. So what does the multiple aspects mean, Phil? Right there, dude. What I explained earlier. See how he's saying that? The multiple aspects. So it'll be like, well, the TBS title is now the True TV title, or the AEW Plus Ch Digital Championship. And now Rampage will be on our app on Honor Club that's being rebanded as, and now Ring of Honor is called AEW Ring of Honor. It's going to be that. Like, that's what he means by multiple aspects. It'll be some weird, kooky, like, like that. It'll be sort of convoluted. And he's going to scream it at us and go, but don't forget in time, cop, you know, and that's how it's going to go down. So Tony Khan, again, before Dynamite starts, goes, thank you all watching AEW tonight as we approach this indelible period with AEW all in London, Wembley, August 25th, plus the most important announcements in AEW history ahead. So he's like, so now he's being like, you know, the most important announcements are yet to come. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't it be fun? These these announcements are imminent. Okay, okay, bud. I, I can't wait to hear what they are. He's going to announce it the week before Wembley on the Go Home Show or like the week after or something. It might not even come before London. That's the whole thing. So anyways, um, Tony Khan is a man of the people. So what happened was what Tony McCon does, which is the most Vince McMahon shit ever, Fulham FC women have announced a new partnership with AEW that will see the promotion feature as the front of shirt sponsor for the 2024-2025 season in soccer. So, Tony Khan, I need to get the you. What? You what? He sponsored his own team. I mean, is this a mark thing to do or am I a mark for saying that? I'm sure that there's companies that sponsor, like, okay, Ryan Reynolds is involved in like a mobile phone company maybe they sponsor his soccer club who knows but all i'm saying is like dude they're running around with aew jerseys on it's so silly dude whatever hopefully it means more money for this roster but like how much does this cost them and like what will this do what are, are people gonna see that and want to go watch AEW? i don't know I guess I'm not going to knock it till we see how it turns out, but the Fulham, like I'm, I'm not enough of a soccer fan to be able to talk about this, you know, but there are soccer fans luckily who, 
who have taken to the internet to inform us uh, how they feel about this. Now, um, Meltzer said what sent me this and said, I'm glad Tony Khan's relationship with Fulham fans has been mended. So here's, you know, people before. This is like, I think a year ago or two, maybe. This guy says, this will do, son. And there's a flag that says Tony Khan wanks dogs. I don't know when this is from. Is this this year? I have no clue, but... Uh, Tony Khan says that is uncalled for and repulsive. I don't deserve it and I won't stand for it. Please do not bring that filth to any of our matches. And then this guy goes, oh, I listen, mate, you've had your fair share of popping off on social media to various fans, essentially threatening them whenever they've smoking out against you. We all heard about you. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> We've all heard about your little set too in the director's box as well damn i don't know what that's alluding to you don't even go to games anymore so you won't see it damn so he's like on a set he doesn't even go to the games or i don't know but tony Khan responds and goes literally none of that is true that sign is obscene and i've never done anything to you to deserve it yeah that's pretty rank to say he wanks dogs but like that's how they feel dude and they're hooligans bro they're soccer hooligans they're bruvs what are you gonna do aaron Rowland for two dollars says aw being a sponsor puts the logo in fifa EA Sports. Hmm. And thank you for bringing that to our attention because I did not uh, even think about that. That is actually a good move. And if he's making a play at that more European fan base, I guess. I don't know. If he was smart, man, just run AEW out of the UK. And just team up with what culture and cultaholic and Meltzer and all those, because they'll all put you over. And, you know, <laughs> and so like I would just base it out of the UK for a bit. OK, why not just spend like six months there? The best guy is Tony Khan. Tony Khan is a man of the people. So here's a Fulham guy, a real couple of hooligans, a couple of bruvs. They're going to tell you their aspects. So these guys can talk it before me. I have no right. That's what people could tell me. You have no right, bruv. OK, well, these guys do. Here we go. On the second point, Russ, I am yeah. fascinated by this because um, I used to watch wrestling when I was <laughs> um, when I was young. I used to watch wrestling in the in the late nineties yeah. when everybody used to watch wrestling, and right. I still tune I still tune into a few wrestling podcasts because I find the whole you know it's quite fun and interesting. yeah, of course, of course. And Fulham get mentioned on wrestling podcasts all the time, yeah. And and these wrestling commentators are asking. What do these Fulham fans think of this guy um, appearing on a wrestling um, TV show in America when he's yep. supposed to be the director of football? I mean, you said it's a full-time job. By yeah, the way, in, in football, a full-time job is not 40 hours a week. It's 80 hours a week, isn't That's it? That's right, Ben. That, of course. Fuck, I hear that, brother. Of course. Um, so I just spin the question on you because the um, – when you see Jamie Carragher going on TV, calling him a clown <laughs> for um, arguing with fans on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and you shout out Cottage Talk, by the way. I think that's the name of this pod. And I did not uh, shout them out. Shout these guys out. No clue what the... <laughs> I'm not deep into soccer or football, as they call it. But uh, yeah. Anyways, shout them out. You know, don't get me wrong. If he's... Um, if he's been given a script and playing a, you know, he's acting on on the wrestling show, fine, yep. whatever. But he's not being a director of football when he's when when he's doing that, is he? Right. Um, and th there's a bit of a sense that um, and see, they, he doesn't even fully grasp. Like, no, dude, he's not. He's not just. He's not just like writing a script, getting a script and playing a character. That's not even what he does. He did that for like a couple of weeks, right? What Tony Khan does is he is, what is the name of his job? The owner, head of creative, CEO and general manager of AEW. Like same thing with when he did, when he goes on these sports shows, he's the, he's the statistician, whatever, whatever of Fulham, the director of Fulham or whatever. No dude, in AEW, he's running, owning, operating writing the show, doing the creative, doing Gorilla. And he's supposed to be doing this? Like, it's the, it's even worse than these guys think, you know? Mm. Well, he's... Uh, people are suspicious of him, and at worst, um, uh, laughing at him, I, I think. What's your view from the inside? Well, what's interesting about this, and I will say this, I, I believe Tony believes he could do all three jobs equally. And I do 
you know, and again, there are there are fans that think that he doesn't care about phone football club. I disagree with that. I just think that you need someone in charge that is specifically <laughs> just concentrating on phone football club. Someone just I used to. <laughs> <laughs> that is, is hilarious. That could actually be at Craven Cottage at Mottsburg Park all the time. Yeah, so, I mean, there you go, man. The horse's mouth. You know, we talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars as well. It's like, well, what's going on there? Doesn't he have a job there too? Oh, and I'm going to Miami to the watch the NBA game courtside with Mercedes Monet. You know, it's craziness. So... Tony Khan loves Time Cop, and he's also opened up about his relationship with Guy Fieri. Apparently, Guy Fieri gets mad if you don't say Guy Fieri. But I love Guy Fieri. When I'm at um, when I'm at hotels, I throw his on. It's always marathoning on some random channel, and then it gets me hungry, and I'm usually drunk, and then I order a bunch of bad food, and shout you out, dude. So Tony says. It was inspirational. Anytime you're in the vicinity of Flavortown, <laughs> we're introducing the Flavortown Championship. It's for who can eat the most wings, the, the biggest bowl of poutine. <laughs> guy Fieri is a great person. Guy is a great guy. <laughs> guy is a guy's a guy. I mean, he's guy, right? Guy Fieri in the picture is like, hey, what's up, man? Like he doesn't even know. Oh, you're a wrestler? Sweet, dude. Well, I've got some drop kicking wings. Here's diners, drive-ins, and dives. <laughs> Let's go. I was on a bus with him going to Olympic events. Oh, he says, we spent a lot of time together. I was on a bus with him going to Olympic events. So you were spent a lot of time with him on the bus, dude. That's dope. We were sitting at different sports together in stadiums and hanging out at the hotel. We were sitting at different sports together in stadiums and hanging out at the hotel. Okay, sweet. Sorry, I miss I misinterpreted what he said there. I would love to see him in AEW sometime. What? Oh my god. You Tony. what? I would love to see Guy Fieri in AEW sometime. Doing what? Why? Why? What would he do? Do a, a spot with the pizza guy? Like just ha just invite him to the show. This is what I mean about Tony, right? He just loves to overshare, and this is why the Sheets love him, and this is why he loves them, because they stroke his ego, and he tells, and he just tells and tells and tells, right? So Tony's idea is like, okay, and then we'll have him throw a plate of spaghetti in his face, and then he'll team up with Luigi Primo and Action Bronson, you know, in a, in a loser stuffs a turkey match, you know, and then it would, like, that's what it would be. I don't know. I'm going off hard on Tony today. But um, this is hilarious. I thought this was so adorable. He's such a fan of Guy Fieri. I would love for some of the top stars in AEW to pay a visit to Flavortown and work with him. On what, a cooking show, Tony? I would admit, Guy Fieri, RJ City, and then like a wrestler of the week doing a cooking show on YouTube, that would be good. Again, Tony. Best guys, Tony Khan. A million dollar idea from your boy, Phil. Once again, I keep giving them to you. If you tune into the show, I cook for you, dude. No Guy Fieri. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I love that we had so much fun, but also being with our bosses, the people that are trusting us to put on shows every week. So he's calling these following people his bosses, the people who love the shows we put on every week. So, Tony, this is why I think they're still going to be involved with WBD in some capacity. But it's a huge fail anyways, because... Dave Meltzer and them talked all this and Tony didn't deliver what they talked about. So anyways, to be there with David Zaslav, Bruce Campbell and Kathleen Finch and their families. It was awesome. There is a great team at Warner Bros. Discovery. They have a great leadership group and team. They're great people. Everything's great. We are all staying in one hotel together. Yeah, you told us that, bud. They really put first class experience together. It was a great Olympics. OK, well, that's good for Tony. You know, instead of him like, yeah, I'm here scouting wrestlers like Chad Gable was doing in vignettes on Raw. There he's like, yeah, I really would love Sky Fury to come in. Guy's a game changer. He's a great guy. He's great. Everything's great. Japer. It's great.